So I am uh, Robert Moyer. I am the Chief Science Officer of HyperCycle. I am uh, involved in building various elements of the technology, working with the engineering team, uh, including the uh, Earth 64 technology that underlies the uh, token system and uh, the licenses uh, for software in, in HyperCycle. Uh, what is a HyperCycle? HyperCycle is uh, many things. I guess in general, it's a network, and a network developed uh, to build the Internet of AI, uh, and crucially to allow uh, AI agents to communicate with each other uh, and transact with each other peer to peer without any, any intermediary. And uh, who are leading? Uh, and, uh, what kind of uh, structure do you have? Kind of structure. Yeah, leading to be saliva, you could explain to be saliva. Right, and, right. Uh, you are in, where are you located? There are many people like me, you know, yes, like yes. South Korea and all over there. Sure, yeah. So, uh, our, the leader of our company is, uh, and this vision holder uh, for, for the whole project is Tufi Saliba. Uh, he's the CEO of the company. Uh, the co-author of Toda IP, which is one of the fun fundamental technologies underlying uh, the possibility of uh, hypercycle functioning the way that it, it does. Uh, along with uh, Dan Tolliver, who's our CTO, uh, the Chief Technology Officer. Uh, we have a diverse and very capable team uh, globally working on, on different elements of the system, uh, engineers from different parts of the world, uh, a, a fantastic marketing team, um, and many uh, high-level advisors uh, across uh, different uh, areas, all of whom uh, you know, do an excellent job with you know, considering all the different uh, areas that HyperCycle needs to uh, be aware of in terms of what we're trying to achieve as a network, as well as finding opportunities to help us grow and, uh, and achieve our goals of building a, you know, a high-performance computing network uh, built for uh, uh, AI, AI co uh, communication directly with AI. Yeah. Uh, as an advisor, <laughs> that uh, you are now currently focusing on AI boxes as well as uh, AI rings and some other devices. So, what, what are they, and uh, you know, how is the AI box going on? Yeah, so uh, hypercycles. So those aren't uh, hypercycle projects themselves, but they're part of a an ecosystem of com companies around hypercycle. Uh, that are uh, focused on specific elements of the overall uh, system that we're building. Uh, one of these companies is called Hyper Appliance, which produces the Hyper AI box, uh, which is a little computer that you can uh, put in your house uh, and it becomes a source of passive income. So it provides a, a revenue generating capacity uh, that can pay for not only its own electricity, but the electricity, say, of your house uh, and uh, that project is already uh, released to uh, two versions of the box that uh, are, I believe, sold out at this point, but uh, a third version is coming out soon. Uh, Who are making the third version? Do you know? Uh, Still the UK? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I expect it, it will move somewhere different. Uh, but I don't have the, the story for that yet. Uh, the other company that you mentioned is uh, Hyper Ring. Yeah. So again, it's an independent company, not part of HyperCycle. Uh, they are developing uh, an NFC ring, so a ring that has uh, NFC devices built into it, uh, which has a number of different applications. The basic one uh, that uh, Hyper Ring is starting with is uh, a way for easy second factor or multi-factor authentication. So you can simply tap a device, uh, rather than having to send you an email or enter a code, uh, you can just tap the device and that provides uh, a second or, or multiple form of uh, authentication. Uh, and it has many other applications, but that's that's the initial one. How's the progress going? With? With uh, Ring, Hyper Ring. 
Um, Will that be available this year, within this year, or next year? Uh, yeah, so I don't have a distinct date, but I suspect that uh, some early versions of it will be available at some point this year. This year? Yeah. And the price sort of range? I, yeah, I can't, can't answer that question. Uh, well, I, I think I think you can, you can imagine that there'll be variability. Like so, there there could be uh, quite inexpensive versions of the ring, but also sort of luxury versions uh, uh, that are sort of suitable to different markets. Okay. The uh, education. Do you need a hypocyc also be educated for you know, general public? So do, do we need hypercycle, you know, what is hypercycle? What is uh, internet AI? What right, is, uh, right. You know, how would you, without just publicity only, but you have to educate people to use AI boxes, to use AI rings, right? Like that. So uh, I mean, I, I think uh, so. Hypercycle is an e extremely complex system uh, with many different parts and. As a network itself, and the software, and how different when the, the licenses, the tokens, uh, and, and the you know AI software that runs inside our software, there's many different pieces. And if it, from the point of view of understanding all of those and how they function and how that leads to the building of the Internet of AI, that's a very complicated thing. Uh, so, insofar as what, however you're engaging with the network requires an understanding of that, then yes, it requires some. Uh, education to sort of get you through the different layers or, or stages of it. But when it comes to the AI box, uh, the Hyper AI box and the Hyper Ring, they are designed as more sort of from a consumer facing point of view as something quite simple to interact with. It, it's taking the complexity out of the process. So the Hyper AI box is designed to be a very easy to use a device. It updates itself. Uh, and you know, we'll make it easy for you to, to decide how you want to uh, you know, contribute to this Internet of AI and, and, and become a you know, revenue generating node in, in the network to make that as easy and seamless as, uh, as possible. And similarly with the Hyper Ring, it'll be very, it's not a complicated thing to interface with, it doesn't require understanding all the details of how it works to be able to use it. So. Uh, those those two items uh, make it very easy for the consumer to get involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, are now setting up uh, educational contents on HI, and we will have a you know low level, middle level, you know, high level. For the low level, we are currently teaching generative AI. Okay. So yep. uh, mid journey, how to use uh, you know chat GPT. <laughs> right, right. So uh, if you think of uh, educational sort of project of hypercycle, uh, we are thinking of you know like uh, there's a similar or true AGI. They are the um, chip design, you know, chip designing. So. We could teach from chip designing classes all the way down right. to generate AI, very simple AI. Uh, in between, what uh, would you teach Koreans? What kind of uh, level of uh, <laughs> education program can you have if you could do uh, online courses or online things for right. educating Koreans? What could be the idea? Uh, so that's a, a great question. Uh, uh, a difficult one for me to answer uh, because my area of specialization, so I have a uh, background in applied mathematics, but I'm not an AI scientist, so I don't have a specialization in AI. Um, my background is more in uh, algorithms and uh, uh, from a point of view of like mathematical uh, software or, or uh, symbolic and numeric computation. So that's uh, where my training is. Uh, and, and from the point of view of uh, working in hypercycle, it, from a technical point of view, it's more at the protocol level. So I think at this point, uh, the specific background that I have uh, isn't 
meeting your greatest need from an education point of view. Uh, but that might change in the future. Uh, and as you know, my role shifts from a research point of view, that it could lead into places where um, you know my knowledge and and I do have you know I was a professor briefly, so I have a lot of teaching exp experience at the university level. So uh, I could potentially be of a benefit there, certainly from the point of view explaining how hypercycle works at various levels of complexity uh, is something I can I can do for sure. So. Uh, 